It's really rare that an already S tier single target skill gets a significant buff, but next patch Bladefall Blade Blast will have roughly 120% more damage. And that's basically because Bladefall is getting two major changes. Firstly, when it's being triggered, it no longer has that penalty of 50% less lingering blades. In other words, pure double the blade count. But you also get one additional volley from quality now. And this means you get six volleys instead of five by default, 20% more blades again on top of that. In addition, Blade Blast isn't like mines. So Blade Blast can have multiple detonation sequences going off at the exact same time. In other words, you're not really limited by having too many blades out. You can just cast Blade Blast more than once and pop all the blades on the screen wherever they are. In essence, this build uber dot caps at under 10 divines in terms of day two software trade currency really, really easily while still having the right set of defenses to fight ubers properly. Before I get into this, just a couple of notes. This is not a new player friendly build. And that's not to say it's complicated. It's not at all, but you do need to press multiple different buttons in a video game. So just be aware of that. Secondly, and more importantly, this build cannot map. I mean, you could map, you could swap out Arcanist Brown for Unleash and played Unleash Bladefall Blade Blast with two cold iron points, but I think that's a terrible idea. Instead, I recommend starting this, if you're going to, as a Blade Vortex Seismic or pure Blade Vortex Assassin, which I do have a tree for. I think it's really, really intuitive. It's just Poison BB. And then transitioning into a bossing setup when you hit around level 95 or 97. And that setup is tried and tested. I have a guide for the last patch and I don't played it through myself, you know, 30 hours, fresh start to Ubers and SF Hardcore, so it's not a hard thing to do by any means. Let's get into the details of the build, let's keep this one relatively quick. So let's talk about the core mechanic of this thing first. You want to use Bladefall and Arcanist Brand. This is sort of my different single target setup versus the Unleash setups. I've always been doing this when it comes to bossing with Bladefall Blade Blast. It's really, really efficient because your Arcanist Brand is constantly casting. Once you have your two brands targeting, you might drop an extra couple just for, you know, reattaching after it falls off. You want to detonate Blade Blast intermittently, manually cast your two self curses, and also use a Divine Blessing Malevolence. That's basically your skill rotation. It's not so much a rotation as just a bunch of buns you have to keep up. The tree looks really, really ugly, and the main reason is because we do want Runebinder. Now, next patch, you might be able to skip this if it actually becomes true that you don't need um, that many Blade Falls on the ground. But chances are, it's just a raw boost in damage by about double, um, so I would always opt for this kind of tree. The big thing I want to talk about is this Glorious Vandy, and sort of the thing that is only software trade enabled and not really enabled anywhere else. I'm using this to get Wither. I'm going to look for Ritual Shadows on any of these nodes. Any of these nodes could be what you're looking for in terms of your Anoint, in terms of pathing if it's a two-pointer, but in any case, it's one of the most efficient ways to get access to Wither. Because you're hitting so many freaking times with Blade Blast, uh, it's just really easy to cap it at 15 Wither stacks pretty much the instant you start fighting an enemy. Just one more thing to note, you do hit a lot. Area of effect doesn't matter, basically, on Blade Blast Bladefall. You just don't want to have any increase. A lot of people like to run Ink AoE on Blade Blast. I'm pretty sure this is just for clear speed, because as far as single target goes, its gain is less than 10% as a more damage support. If you've done any self-poison testing with Bladefall Blade Blast before, you know that Ink AoE is pretty much useless. I almost forgot. Arcanist Brand has an additional line that says um, support skills have less AoE, and this is multiplicative with the Conk effect, so AoE is even less important when you're playing this Arcanist Brand Bladefall setup. It just pretty much guarantees you're going to hit with almost every single blade, as long as the boss isn't moving. Other than this part, which is really, really bastardized, but does allow you to run a pretty easy aura setup, the rest of the tree looks like a standard poison setup, but without the duration nodes, so Shadow starts hyper-efficient. I go through here. You can also take Entropy instead of the top side if you prioritize having more QOL and skill effect duration on your Arcanist Brand, as opposed to a slightly more damage with crit. And then you get some poison notes. Inveterate down here is really good. You could opt for skipping Inveterate if you geared really heavily into suppression, like didn't go for a cloak, that sort of thing. Um, and then I go for Force Shaper because I do think that the cast speed really matters. For some reason, I find that Arcanist Brand has one of the most painful cast speeds ever. I think it feels terrible. This build doesn't look for poison in a lot of sources. I run a regular Herald of Agony, I run Poison Chance here, and I take the Assassin Ascendancy. Last thing, people always ask me, why Assassin? Well, this is my damage with Assassin. It's um, 24 mil, right? And also with this config to estimate for ambush and assassinate. Because I don't click low life or anything. So let's take this out. 24 mil. 18. Bam, bam, bam. And now we're down to about 4 million. So I think, you know, assassin is pretty pr pretty strong, basically. And it's also strong in next patch because we lost access to Divergent Herald of Agony. So poison chance is even harder to find elsewhere. A lot of people would be opting for Dendra Bait on their Pathfinder poison builds. I think this is also good, but in the early game, honestly, it doesn't compare to the efficiency of this setup. In the video you're watching, I'm actually running a 6 link cloak without plus 2 AoE. I would definitely use a Corrupted Cloak, um, just because you can use Tainted Fusing, Tainted Chromes, it makes it much easier to set the whole thing up. Two Cold Iron Points, these aren't that expensive, you can self-farm these if you want to through Divination Cards. The other option is go Breath of the Council, run Spellblade Support instead of Efficacy on your Blade Blast, 
and then play with Leper's Alms as a shield. I prefer this for two main reasons. One, the damage is higher straight up. Two, I like Whirling Blades as a bossing skill. The helmet's kind of whatever. Like, I like to have this kind of physical mitigation, but in reality, if you're bossing, there's very few his hits that matter, and the things that do will kill you. This doesn't tank Shaper Slam, you know? You just have to dodge that. But it does allow you to tank things like Uber Uber Elder Tentacles. It can help out with Serious Beam, that sort of thing, so I would still go for this kind of thing. Gloves, <clears throat> some amount of suppression, Chaos Sound Multi. I do like that Life Leech. It doesn't matter that much, because you tend to play with a lot of running Life Flasks when you do boss. The boots, faster poison, um, avoid stun is, I think, really, really good here. So I actually go for a benchcraft avoid stun here and then avoid stun here on these boots. And then I run two more geals for avoid stun. Having stun immunity makes uber bosses really, 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 well, not easy, but you just need it. You know, if you get tagged by Annihilation by Exarch on uber Exarch, you will just get stunned and instantly die. So I think getting stun immunity is pretty important. There's a few other ways you could do it, but it also allows you to swap out of Brian King and run any of the other pantheons. Depending on what the fight is. Replica Dragonfang's Flight. Good amulet if you want defensive options. Internal Damnation is pretty good. It's really easy to Chaos Cap because it's a Ming's Heart build. You get a ton of Chaos Res right off the bat. Plus one gems, dot multi, that sort of thing tends to be pretty good. Amulet's pretty much a flexible slot. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Even the Mana Reservation is fairly loose because I'm running Vitality as Nora, so you can just scale this however you want to up and down. I'm also running a Precision in this POB for some reason. I mean, it gives a little bit of damage, I think. Amethyst Ring, this is probably where you'll find a lot of your resistances, catalysts, you know, it's not that hard to do. I mean, like, I don't have any conflict for res on this POB, so it's actually really easy to res cap on. And then for the belt, just make sure you keep open a suffix for that regen mod. I would use my Essence of Rage here to craft on strength. There's also some space for practical application if you need more <coughs> resistance or attributes from there. And then you can always drop things like, you know, pathing to the top side here instead of this, or dropping things like a 50 flat life mastery. The skill gem setup is really straightforward, no awakened gems, just blade blast with damage supports for poison, blade fall with utility supports for a lot of casts. You're running dual curse to spare temp chains, I manually cast both of these things, it's just easier than using, you know, a trigger or something like that. You can't really use Arcanist Brand because your Arcanist Brands are already occupied. Flame Bash my move skill of choice when you're doing bosses, Purity of Elements, Haste. I don't actually like Herald of Purity, I'd probably opt here for Herald of Agony instead. Um, they both kind of suck, honestly, um, when it comes to things like Unit Collision. But I find Hoag to be less intrusive, and it does allow you to have more Poison Chance flexibility elsewhere. Rolling Blades, Faster Attacks, DB Malevolence, Straightforward, and then completely flexible slot here. It can be Steel Skin, it can be a Mortal Call, it's your Guard Skill, whatever you want, doesn't really matter. Finally, let's talk about the mapping setup. Actually, before we do that, this Mastery. Really, really, really broken. Because you're casting Arcanist Brand, Blade Blast, One Curse, Two Curse, Divine Blessing, Flame Dash, Six kills fairly often within about a 10 second window. I tend to average this out to be about three to four casts. I think I have four on this POB. It's just a crazy good mastery to have on the street. Don't forget about this. Leveling. Day one mapping, day one mapping, and day one mapping. So the tree becomes more like this. I opt for overcharge in a mapping setup because you do get easier physical mitigation from this. The tree just, I mean, look at it. It's a BB seismic tree. It gets a lot of duration. It gets a lot of really efficient nodes. Should be pretty straightforward. The one thing is that you might drop over prepared, kind of up to you, but it's probably the last nodes I would take. Skill gems. I really like Vol BV. I think this is really, really, really good to run. You want to make sure you run NKOE and Unleash. Um, my BV radius isn't huge, but I am running almost 100% increased AOE, which I think is like fairly solid. It makes the skill playable to me. It's not good, but it's playable, especially when you pair with Obliteration. Hoag, Determined Grace. Hoag is really important in this setup in particular because you don't want to be relying on Poison Chance from the Curse Mastery. And then Withering Step, NKOE, Plague Bear. This is really great. Plague Bear is honestly most fear clear when you're playing a Poison Build, especially when you get Obliteration. I run Divine Blessing Haste in this because you just want mapping speed and Shield Charge faster attacks. Seismic Trap is just to pound your single target a little bit harder. I don't really know how much this actually gives you, but frankly, you do have the socket space, so I guess, like, why not, you know? Molten Shell, Cast Image Taken can actually be run, because we are playing Determined Grace as our aura setup, and then Dual Curse, still the same thing over here. Also, my setup's on Uber Config, so the damage is, like, closer to this, you know? Not this, um, as far as mapping goes. And 5 mil for a mapping setup is fine. Gear-wise, basically just all blue gear everywhere. Obliteration, and then everything else is just basically SSF gear. I wouldn't think too much about it, because you just pick up gear that you can get, maybe swap in Cloak of Flame or Lightning Coil when you feel you have the resources to buy that sort of thing. Otherwise, it's really, really generic. It's pretty much just life res everywhere. Maybe dot multi, maybe a few implicits. You know, some NKOE as a craft could be good, especially since you'd put your seismic trap in these gloves, but that's pretty much it. Straightforward bosser. Really, really, really powerful as a bosser. As a mapper, not so great, 
And next patch, this is getting 120% more damage as a bosser. So with this gear set, this gear set right here, with no awaken gems, is gonna hit uber dog cap, and I'm underestimating that uber dog cap too. It's actually crazy, and even the poison duration isn't that insane. Look at this. Even the poison duration is like six seconds. You know, it, it's it's actually absurd. Wait, where is it? 6.1 seconds, right? So this is this is crazy, crazy efficient. I think in terms of bossers, it pretty much only gets outmatched by mob mischief ignite. And I personally don't even know what the numbers are really like that. I mean, the chest seems like a really crazy thing to give plus 12 levels to your golem. Otherwise, this is one of the top five bossers, no question, hands down, in softcore trade.